Hello all and welcome to Silver Lady Stamping. I initially planned to do a video with my face at the beginning, but here we are as of May 22nd, 2023, and we're in allergy season is in full swing. And, and it affects my eyes. And so I've been making the mistake of, you know, rubbing my eyes because it, they're itchy with all the pollen floating around. And so my eyes are a little bloodshot and a little bit, a little bit puffy. Not a good look. So I decided I would instead um, do a uh, top down video because I wanted to show you this really cute um, fun fold card. It's a concertina tag card. And I'm just going to show you once you untie the little ribbon and then you pull the ribbon out and it spills out into a little concertina tag that I have stamped with couple of sentiments and put some uh, countryside in designer series paper on some of the other steps. Um, this card can actually be done with um, different tag elements and what I mean by that is you know the tag toppers. Um, if you have the tag punch that's in the catalog right now, um, then you could just use that to punch the top and the bottom strip and I'll, and I'll give you all the details. You can do the top and the bottom strip with that punch. Um, if you have another tag topper punch as we've had in the past and you keep your punches, even when they retire, you may still have a tag topper punch. Um, you can use that. Um, what I, and you know what, I'll show you, um, what I did and then you can decide how you want, uh, to do yours. But I thought this was a really cute, fun fold and you open it up and it's just an easel card, right? It's an easel card, um, but with a fun fold element to it. So cute. Um, and I'm going to set this aside and then I'm going to um, give you the measurements. Now, I did already start to put this together because I did start my video earlier until my neighbor next door decided to put his music on really loud and start exercising outside, hitting the throwing his weighted ball on the ground repeatedly. And I don't necessarily mind it, but I do mind it when I'm doing a video and all you'd hear is boom, boom, and then the music. So I already started putting this together until I stopped the video and then I've started over. So what you would need is a piece of, in this case, a piece of Knight of Navy. Now you can, and it measures four and a quarter by 11 and you would score it at five and a half. You can use, instead of Knight of Navy, you could use um, Misty Moonlight. And I was in fact going to use Misty Moonlight for this, but when I went to get it and I realized that I had not ordered it. And even though I thought I had ordered it because I ordered every, all of the other colors and I inadvertently forgot to add in Misty Moonlight. So. We're using Knight of Navy. Now you could use Boho Blue as well because there's some Boho Blue in this Countryside Designer Series paper. But I thought that was a little too matchy-matchy. I wanted something that was gonna make it pop. And in that case, I've decided to use um, Knight of Navy. So four and a quarter by uh, 11, scored at five and a half. Then layer number one, or actually, let me just, layer number one is five and a quarter, basic white, five and a quarter by four. You want to cut two of those because one will be for the inside, right? So you're going to, so so cut two, five and a quarter by four. 
Then you'll need a piece of designer series paper and I use the countryside in, but feel free to use whatever other designer series paper you have. You'll need it for the base, which is five inches by three and three quarters. And then you're gonna need it for the tag as well. So I've already uh, tacked down the basic white and the designer series paper. Let's tackle the tag. So the tag measures eight inches by two inches. And I'm gonna, and then we're gonna score. So let me get out my scoreboard. Now you can use your um, paper trimmer, but my scoring tool on my paper trimmer broke off and it's, I have to get a new one. So in the meantime, I am, I mean, the cutting part of it is fine. It's just the scoring tool, the scoring blade uh, broke off. So I'm using Stampin' Ups, what they call a scoring tool. We call it, most people call it a scoreboard. It's really awesome. So you're going to, um, hold on, I just refer to my measurements here. So I've already done the scoring, but I'm gonna go over it again. So you're gonna score it at two inches. This is obviously on the long side, two inches. And then from there, you're gonna do it every one inch. So you're gonna, you scored it at two. Now you'll score it at three, four, five, and six. So this section is two inches and this section is two inches. That's all the scoring you're gonna do. That's it, we're done with that. Now, for the tag topper, you're going to need to punch the top and the bottom. And the way that I'm doing it, now I said, if you have a tag topper punch, you can just go ahead and use that. You're good, you're good to go. If you don't have a tag topper punch, then I'm using the lasting label punch, which is in the catalog, or you could use a decorative die. Um, but let me show you how I'm doing the punch. Now, normally when we're using a punch, we go in, you know, on that short side, right? We put it in till it comes through the center. That's not how we're doing it. Not doing it that way. What we're going to do is put it through the top because I don't, if I put it through this way, um, then it's not going to, uh, what I'm gonna get is a backwards, you know, the, the decorative part will, will be on the inside. I want it to be on the top. And the way to do that is just to take your tag and slide it in from the top. And you can, it, it's gonna let you do that. Just slide it in a little bit, give it a punch, and see what you get. Beautiful. You just push that out. Now you wanna do the same thing on the other side. Slide it in. And just, you wanna just go in a little bit. Oops, hold on, hold on. I pushed it a little bit too much. This is such a great hack for really just about anything. Okay, there we go. Get that out of the way. So now you have two sides that, right, that match. And that's what you want. Now I'm going to unfold. Oh, let me see, oh, my bone folder. Okay. All right, and I wanna just give each one of these folds a little burnish. that gives it an, and lets it um, lay flat. It gives just gives it a nice crisp edge. 
Okay, now. All right, so I'm, the front is going to be where it's going to open up is the part where it's the valley fold. And that'll be the, the front. Now, one of the other things that I need to do, um, let's see, I had, oh yeah, here it is. I want to just put a, because I didn't use a traditional tag uh, punch, which usually will come with a hole at the top, I need to make one because we're going to uh, put some ribbon there. So I'm just using a regular school punch. And that's all. That's that's you just want to be able to have a hole so you can slide your ribbon through it. Okay. You turn that around. Now for your designer series paper, you want to um I'm again, I'm just using some countryside in because I just think this is such beautiful paper. I'm really happy with it. And you're going to cut three pieces um, at one and three quarters by one and a half. And we're going to put, you're going to put one piece here, um, and you're going to put one piece here, and then you're going to put another piece on the other side. Oh, you know what I messed up? I messed that up. So let's see. I should have measured. I should have. I'm going to just push it. Push that up. I knew I should have done this one side at a time. Anyway, boo-boos are okay. Everything can be fixed. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to go this side so I know which... Which side? Okay. That's better. That's okay that I have that. I'm not too concerned about it. All right. I just want to be able to give you the directions. All right, so you're going to cut three pieces at one and three quarters by one and a half. And here's how I put them on. One piece goes here, one piece goes on the bottom. And then one piece goes on the other side because when you close it up, obviously you want to have a piece on that back side. All right. I'm going to just tack them down. Oh, my, that doesn't seem to want to work. Let's try this one. And that fits nicely. And I'm going to put my third one on the back. Then you will want two pieces, two small pieces of designer series paper cut at one and three quarters and three quarters. And those are going to go, we're going to put one right here. On the step, on the first step. And then we're, we're going to uh, put a piece of basic white in that spot. So we're going to leave that blank for now. And then we're going to put another piece of designer series paper on the one below that. Okay, so now you will want 
two pieces of basic white, also cut at one and three quarters by three quarters. And I'm going to do a little stamping and I'm using the days to remember and I'm going to put happy birthday, it's your day. Now, let's see. All right, let's see, happy birthday. This one. Now I am going to use some Misty Moonlight ink because that's what I happen to have here. Let me move this over. Obviously you can use whatever sentiment is appropriate, whatever you wanna make your card for. There we go. Clean my stamp off. Very important step, as we all know, keep our stamps clean. All right, now I need to get the, the stamp is losing its tackiness. I'm gonna to have to clean it. Um, let's see, where is the one I want? Oh, here it is. It's your day. Okay. Okay, let's put those, tack those down. This is actually, I mean, when you think about it, as you're going through it, once the, the, instructions are broken down it's not a difficult card and that's pretty much true of most of the cards that you'll see being demonstrated once the mystery is taken out of it that you get the directions step-by-step -step directions <coughs> excuse me you realize oh I can do that and you can All right, so I'm using the silver trim from the Simply Elegant trim. Um, there's also silver ribbon from the silver and gold pack, which is actually only available online in the online exclusive store. Um, you know, which I don't know if you're aware, you probably are, that there's two parts to Stampin' Up! Pro to buying Stampin' Up! products. One is the catalog, but um, two is the online exclusive store, which those products, you can't find those in the catalog, but they're available. But they're, the difference is that they're only available while supplies last. And once they're gone, they're gone. All right, so what I want to do with the back, you saw I just wove some ribbon back there. I want to just take a piece of, a small piece of tear and tape and just put it on the back just to hold it down. Oh, let me just see, let me make sure. I think I have way more ribbon than I need, but yeah, I just want to take some tear and tape and place it over the ribbon and or the twine. This is so hard to work with, unfortunately. All right, let me try it again. I just want to put it there so that it's sort of like a, there we go. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of extra work.
There we go. And that'll hold it in place. There. Okay. Now, when we're ready, we can just fold it, fold it up, and push that through. And pull it through the front. But what I'm going to do is Before I tack it down, and we will be tacking it down, what I want to do is tack down a square piece of um, Knight of Navy, measures three inches by three inches. I'm going to go ahead and tack that down. My goodness. My glue for some reason, oh, is that the same one that I had that I was having trouble with and I just picked it up again? That's probably the case. No, oh, why do I have two? Oh my gosh, I have two bottles that are like the glue is not coming out. Figures on camera. They worked fine before. Now they're not. Oh, what? Look, I got a, a third one. I think I need to put those pins in them. I think they get sometimes a little, um, little, uh, the glue gets stuck. So I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna open a new bottle. I know this one will work. Okay, let's try it again. All right, we're just gonna put it right in the center. Now, for the white piece um i want to do a, just a little bit of stamping and in that days to remember stamps that it has a little flower and you can use a little flower design from really there's so many stamp sets right now that have the small flowers i'm just going to put um two flowers i'm going to put one, wait, you know what? I'm gonna stamp off first because I know it's a little dark. There. I'm gonna do two on this side and I'm gonna do two on the other side. Now, this is not essential. I just thought it might look nice to have a little flower design on it that kind of matches the flowers on the countryside end paper. I like it a lot. And then, um, I think, uh, let's see, my boho blue stamp and blend. I'm just going to do a touch the centers of these just a little bit just to darken them up you could also put a you could put some bling in the center of those flowers that would look nice all right so now i'm going to put some um, adhesive on the back of this piece which measures um two and three quarters by two and three quarters so just a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around than the three by three inch Knight of Navy. All right, now we have, okay. I'm going to put some adhesive on the back. And place it in the center. And then we'll tie our bow.
and then so you can let me just show you before we tie the bow so what you have is your little cascading um, tag that went that when the person unties the ribbon that's what they will get but let's just put a little bow on it And we'll tie it. You can pretty much, you could also use the, um, let's see, what is it, the boho? There is some, um, a Knight of Navy ribbon, but I found that the ribbon was, was a little too bulky rather than the twine. So that's why I'm using the twine. I mean, I'm, I like using um, ribbon a lot. I, I love the look of it. But um, in this case, you're better off using the twine. Might be a little big of a bow. Let me cut that down. And then you have your little your little silver bow. And then for the inside, I'm not going to put a sentiment, I'm just going to leave it blank because I did put the sentiment already on the front. It said, happy birthday, it's your day. So now I'm just going to write my sentiment, I mean, my own personal sentiment, my personal greetings on the inside. So that's why I'm going to leave it blank. You can certainly put another sentiment on the inside if you want to. So the card will just stand up. And then when you open it, the card comes cascading down for the recipient. They're gonna love it. And there we have it. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to be posting some additional videos using this countryside and designer series paper because I'm really, really loving it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll give this one a try. I appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by.